A sobering study of the signed treaties and charters between Britain and the United States exposes a shocking truth. The United States has always been, and still is, a British crown colony. King James I was famous not for just changing the Bible into the King James Version, but for signing the first charter of Virginia in 1606. That charter granted America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America. The charter also guaranteed that future kings and queens of England would have sovereign authority over all the citizens and colonized land in America stolen from the Indians. After America declared its independence from Great Britain, the Treaty of 1783 was signed. That treaty specifically identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States and contradicts the belief that America won the War of Independence. Although King George III of England gave up most of his claims over his American colonies, he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. If America had really won the War of Independence, they would never have agreed to pay debts and reparations to the King of England. When Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, the U.S. President was made subservient to the King of England. The 13th Amendment is called the Title of Nobility Amendment and forbids U.S. Presidents and their officials from using royal titles like King or Prince or Baron. For some mysterious reason, the 13th Amendment, which was ratified in 1810, no longer appears on current copies of the Constitution. America's blood-soaked war of independence against the British bankrupted America and turned its citizens into permanent debt slaves of the king. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all U.S. government buildings and destroyed ratification records of the U.S. Constitution.